Hello everyone. Greetings from Prague, from the Czech Republic. Before I start my talk, I would like to thank the Wirth Institute for Austrian and Central European Studies at the U of A and the Wirth Alumni Network for giving us this opportunity to share some of the work that we've been doing since we left the uh, Wirth Institute. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the book that uh, is going to get published in September. Um, I'm the main author of the book, and these are my co-authors here, Eva Haikova and Clara Aliashkova from the same department um, like I am, that is the Czech language department at the Faculty of Education, Charles University in Prague, Ludmila Liptakova from Preshov University in Preshov in Slovakia, and Marta Szymańska uh, from the Pedagogical University in Krakow in Poland. The book is titled Školní výpravy do krajiny češtiny, didaktika českého jazyka pro základní školy, in English that is School Journeys into the Landscape of Czech, Didactics of Czech Language for Primary and Lower Secondary Schools. It is a truly international endeavour and it's a follow-up on the work that we've already done together with my colleagues from Poland and Slovakia uh, this book was published uh, last year and uh, the title is The Relation uh, Between Language and Communication in Czech, Slovak and Polish Didactic Reflection. And another one uh, was Teaching of National Languages in the V4 Countries that was published in 2016. This book that I'm going to talk about uh, represents the outcome of a three-year-long project in which we focused on uh, current practices in L1 education in the Czech Republic. L1, that is first language. Uh, I'm going to refer to Czech as L1. Uh, but actually, because um, I cooperated closely with my colleagues from Slovakia and Poland, uh, it has a truly uh, international perspective. Many of the issues that I'm going to talk about are true not only for Czech, but also Slovak in Slovak schools and Polish in Polish schools. Uh, L1 finds itself in completely new contexts. Edu educationalization uh, is the expansion of educational action and mass popular education everywhere in the world and in all um, aspects in our society. Globalization, that is quite clear what we mean by that. Of course, that this influences school and curricula as well. Uh, part of that is Anglification, which very much uh, influences uh, Czech, Slovak and Polish school because English as the lingua franca uh, has a great impact uh, on our languages as well, and of course, then associated forms of L1 language education. Pluriculturalism, that is challenges of migration and diaspora, including refugee issues, uh, is very uh, up to date right now. Uh, intentionally, I'm not using the term multiculturalism, that has certain connotations. Pluriculturalism, I consider this term um, neutral. And the most important challenge that I think is the technocultural change, changing technologies and their associated cultures and cultural politics, um, which very much influences the way we communicate together. And of course, that is one of the issues of L1 education. That's why the Austrian curriculum uh, among the four traditional uh, communication skills includes viewing as uh, the receptive skill, uh, that is viewing um, multi-genre texts, um, for example, picture together with text, together with music and so on. If you think about Instagram, if you think about Facebook, if you think about YouTube and so on, it is work with language, but not in the traditional sense. But for example, picture uh, takes up uh, the role of text in general. So uh, this is considered one of the new uh, skills that we need to 
learn or master. And in productive skills, it is creating that they say creating, uh, and we know that creating creativity is one of the most challenging skills that we uh, need to uh, accomplish. We need to be inspired by that. What are the main problems of teaching Czech and why do we need to publish a book on didactics of Czech language? Well, the last didactic book on teaching Czech was published in 1998 uh, by Czechova and Stiblik. Uh, later than uh, Shebesta, for example, in 2005, added the communicative approach. However, a complex uh, a book on teaching Czech is almost uh, is more than 20 years old now and in schools we face certain problems uh, it is not the general picture and I would not like to generalize this there are schools and there are teachers that have good practices but we can say that also there are certain problems that are rather traditional and this is reflected in literature first of them is formalism formal application of knowledge. Children use, uh, sorry, they learn mostly grammar without really knowing why they are learning it. So the knowledge they, uh, they master um, is rather formal. They don't know why they are learning such things. Cognitive inadequacy of subject matter means that the pupils are rather over what they are learning or under what they are learning uh, in terms of their cognitive development. Another problem is absence of motivation and purpose. This is very much connected to what we spoke about earlier, but the problem of motivation is a crucial one because we know that motivation is necessary for any learning that we do. The absence of the semantic pragmatic approach to language that is meaning and usage in communication. So uh, again, grammar phenomena that are not uh, framed into communication. How do they really work? And that is the last thing and the most important thing, ignoring the communicative aim. That is the most important one in uh, language teaching. Unfortunately, uh, many practices ignore that. In general, uh, we can say that uh, many uh, examples show us that we are teaching small linguistics rather than communication. But we know that to um, be effective in language, we do not need to become linguists. To master our first language, we do not need to become linguists. Linguistics might help us to be more effective, but we need the knowledge to be functional, to be rooted in communication and in communication purposes. What does research show us uh, about what works in L1 teaching? Constructivist principles, that is, giving the pupils uh, the opportunity to build knowledge for themselves and on their own. The teacher is the one that creates opportunities for learning and the pupils then build their knowledge with the help of the teacher. But it is not transmission of knowledge from the teacher to the pupils as we usually know it. Textocentrism is another strategy that works, and that is building education on text. And in this case, I don't mean only written text, but also spoken text, speech, that is looking into communication situations and observing language in concrete uh, communication situations in concrete texts. Pupils activity, again, passive teacher, active pupils, that is what works mostly. Pupils' communication needs and reflecting their communication needs. If you think about what we really need in communication today, it is very much connected to electronic communication. And consider how much time you spent in school with learning about electronic communication and being 
effective in electronic communication. For example, that is one of the examples of communication needs of the pupils. Then, effective uh, L1 teaching is based on pupils' preconceptions. A six-year-old comes to school with developed grammar, similar to uh, uh, the grammar of an adult. Six-year-olds are able to communicate anything they need and also they are able to understand the communication needs and uh, or aims of other speakers. This, uh, this pre-knowledge or this experience with using language is called preconception, not only in language, but it's um, called in any, like that in any other subject. And effective teaching is based on pupils' preconceptions. That means that teachers utilize the experience uh, that um, pupils have. They utilize what the pupils already know. They do not pretend that the pupils are tabula rasa, that they don't know anything. So we use what the pupils already come to school with. And last but not least, the knowledge about language must be taught in the communicative functional frame. That is how we do that, why we do that, and what for we do that. So using language for purpose, how I form certain meanings in language, how do I do that? And what are the communicative effects of my language choices? So in general, fundamental questions for Czech didactics, but not only Czech, um, that is also for German, uh, Polish, Slovak, uh, um, English and many other languages. What is the role of grammar in Czech language teaching? Uh, what is the relation between teaching grammar and developing communication skills? How does knowledge about language transfer into communication skills of pupils? What are the effective ways to teach Czech? And what is the role of teaching Czech to native speakers anyway? These are the questions that we are trying to answer in the book that I'm presenting today. And we are grounding it on these theories. What should teaching Czech look like? It should be pedocentric. So putting the pupil in the center of the teacher's thinking it should be based on communication needs of the pupils. That is very much connected to pedocentrism. It should be based on language preconceptions. I've already spoken about that. Everything taught must have a communicative overlap. That is, knowledge about language in communication, combining language and communication together, seeing language in communication, not only seeing language, seeing it in communication. How do we form meanings through language in certain communication situations? And how does language work there? The content must be related to everyday life. That means real communication, live texts and live language. The things they, or the pupils, live in, the context they live in, the text they live in, uh, they use, and so on, authentic uh, uh, texts and everyday life. Much more production than reception, much more production that is, uh, that is um, speaking and writing, and not only written communication, but also spoken communication, much more of that in school is necessary. More description and functionalization than prescription, not this is how it must be, or this is how it should be. Uh, but why is it a better way? Why is it a more effective way? What are the more effective ways of saying it, of formulating the idea? Uh, more, what are the more appropriate uh, choices of language in those communication situations that we are in and so on. Today we prescribe too much and we uh, tell the pupils this is how you must use the language. But is it really possible to say that if we don't speak about codification that is spelling for example? 
uh, and some formal morphological phenomena. But what is correct? Correctness has been uh, doubted in linguistics, but still in school it remains quite strong. So in general, it can be summarized as learning language for purpose. That is the a crucial thing here. Everything that I've spoken about so far is put in the new conception that we have found out and uh, or have invented. Uh, the innovative conception of teaching Czech that is based on the principles that I've presented so far. And that is what the book is going to be about. So I'm presenting not only the book, but I'm presenting the contents of the book that is the innovative conception of teaching Czech at school. It is a complex innovative conception. That is that it is looking really into the center of didactics, the problems of building the learning environment of language education in Czech school. It is based on constructivist principles and cognitive communicative principles, cognitive communicative aiming at developing communication and also thought, the thinking abilities and skills of the pupils, because language is bound with thinking. We think in language. So throughout language education, we also develop uh, cognitive skills of the pupils. And the basic paradigm for us is this one. We go from communication to language. So far, most of the models of teaching language in Central Europe are based on the paradigm from language to communication. We uh, learn about grammar and then we try to transfer the knowledge from gram of uh, the, the grammatical knowledge into communication. Here in our conception that we name communicative teaching about Czech, we go the other way around. So from communication to language, looking into texts, textocentrism, looking into situations, communicative situations, and looking at language in them. And then of course, back. So from language to communication. So it is this kind of cycle that goes like this in teaching. Let me now show you a concrete example from the book. Uh, that is this here. I have chosen one lesson that we have uh, created to show you the general principles that we uh, worked on. If I said that we go from communication to language, we um, the, the, the systematic approach to this is the um, principle of communication spheres. I've chosen one, and that is a sphere of everyday, ordinary everyday communication. So uh, the communication spheres are uh, the organizational um, uh, scheme that we have in the book. And then we present uh, the teachers with uh, specific uh, approaches to uh, language phenomena and to communication phenomena using everyday uh, authentic um, contexts. Here we are in year nine and on this I'm going to um, present the general, um, uh, the general characteristics of the conception. In year nine one of the communication needs or intentions is to use, uh, to, to express uh, communication intentions um, effectively and to be cooperative and also uh, polite uh, in communication. Uh, that is also to hold or to um, hold netiquette and uh, the rules of respectable communication. So uh, this is the main topic that we he have here. And we combine the uh, communication issues with language issues. Always there is the a communication problem and the language problem. That is how these communication issues are reflected in the language issues. So in this specific lesson, we address the problem of hate speech, aggression in language expression. Then it is also politeness in electronic communication, netiquette. Uh, communication on a public electronic platform 
And this is reflected in language, for example, in mixing various styles in uh, language on the internet, expressivity in a uh, language word stock, uh, for example, also interjections, emoticons, emojis, uh, the rules of spelling and punctuation, and their intentional breaking, because this is what um, electronic communication very much uh, uses as far as language is concerned. And because we build it on constructivist principles, we follow the three uh, phase model of uh, learning and also teaching. The first phase being exploration. Uh, the aim of exploration is motivating the pupils um, uh, towards what is going to come and also to, uh, to get the preconceptions they have. Uh, to arouse the preconceptions and also uh, to, uh, to, um, so, so that the t teacher uh, becomes familiar with those. So for example here, do you read internet discussions? Have you ever come across hate speech? That is towards the communication issues. And then also to what we are really going to focus on in the lesson. Here it is a YouTube uh, video from uh, which shows a part of uh, the competition called Czechoslovakia has talent, uh, which I'm sure you know as well, because you have some uh, equivalent of that in your country. So do you watch Czechoslovakia has talent? If so, what do you like about it? If not, why not? And so on. And then we play a video that is available on YouTube where uh, a certain uh, contestant uh, is dancing twerk. And we ask the pupils what you thought about the twerk, uh, what do you think about uh, the behavior of the jury, uh, did you like the, the, the uh, twerk, uh, was it really funny and so on, because uh, there is this thing that uh, the girl is doing her best, she's showing her talent. However, the jury, uh, the jury's behavior is really inadequate to the situation. Uh, they are laughing at her, making fun of her, uh, which is quite harsh, I would say. The next phase of uh, the lesson is invention. And we um, work with an authentic text from the discussion on YouTube. So this is a YouTube discussion under the video. And there are two sides of the argument. One side is that she's working hard and that it's great that she was uh, brave enough or that she was motivated enough to go there and show her talent and that she mm, was quite good, that she did well. The other part of the argument, the, some of the other people here say that she's fat, that she is ugly, that she should not be doing this, that um, um, it's awful to show this on TV. There are even some racist comments and so on. In general, the aim of this material is to show how uh, powerful language is and that it can be very harmful. Uh, so the main aim is to understand the power of language. We elaborate on the text. So what is in the discussion? What are the arguments? Um, would you agree or disagree? What's the main topic of the conversation? Uh, and so on. Then if there are any traces of aggression, when, for example, they start to argue between each other here and what uh, arguments they use and so on. And then we are looking at uh, the language in this. So from the content and the meaning, we go into the language. That is how the meanings are formed by language. So we go into the language, specific language phenomena there. For example, the word stock, uh, that is, um, for example, vulgarisms or some efforts to uh, smoothen the vulgarity there or even some traces of respect to the other person and so on. Uh, then, of course, it is also creativity in the word stock. Then it is the phenomenon that we call in Czech psana mluvenost, mluvena psanost. So it is uh, the literal translation would go written spokenness and spoken writtenness. Because um, we can say 
uh, that electronic communication is as fast as uh, um, as if we were speaking mm, when you write on WhatsApp or, or uh, Messenger and so on. It's almost like spoken texts. Uh, we break the rules of grammar, we break the rules of, uh, mm, of punctuation, spelling uh, rules and so on. Is it spoken communication or is it written communication? What is it actually? And this is a big topic for um, language education as well. So in general, we are looking for the use of various language means on the morphological level, lexical, sy syntactic level, and so on. Looking into the formal and informal language, the expressivity, everything with the intention to look into the problem of abusive language uh, on the internet with the aim of showing the pupils that uh, we need to be polite and respectable also on the internet, that the internet is uh, not a completely anonymous space where we could do and say anything we would like, but that there are certain rules and limits that we need to hold. So we are looking into this, you can see that those are authentic contexts, the context that the pupils really live in, that they use, that they appear in every day. Um, and the last part then is also showing them the, the rules of netiquette, uh, that is the etiquette on the internet. And this is also a very important thing about sharing, for example, photographs and videos. We have some problems with this in the Czech Republic recently that they have been reflected also in very popular films um, where this kind of, uh, that where um, uh, platforms like uh, the, on, on the internet, uh, like Facebook and so on, have been abused. Uh, and very um, in a very harsh way. So uh, these are the rules here. The pupils work with those. And the last part is the discovery application. Uh, that is the application of the rules and also uh, the generalization of what we found out in the lesson uh, and also um, uh, using it in real contexts. So this is exactly the frame that we are following um, from the, that is uh, the, the basic one. And that is the constructive, how constructivism is reflected in the conception. So you can see authentic contexts, you can see constructivism, you can see uh, real language, uh, the real communication needs. This is how we work on, uh, on uh, that. This is going to be part of the book that uh, uh, we've already uh, um, put into press and I'm hoping that it will come out in September. Very much uh, thank you for watching. Um, if, should you have any comments, questions, anything, I will be very glad to get in touch. Take care.